Hi, and uh, welcome back to the ESP8266 LED lighting series. Last time we finished soldering the board and setting the voltage regulator to 3.3 volts, and then proceeding to flash the ESP module using the Quinlet uh, PCB or module. This time I wanted to show you a little bit different uh, way to do that. I picked up uh, some of these and what these are uh, are basically USB to serial converters with a cap on it and a 2 times 4 row socket in which you can directly plug the ESP. So basically you can just stick the ESP on there, plug it into your USB there's a serial, serial chip on the board and you can directly program it and flash it or rather if you make a small modification as I've done here you can permanently set this board to be your flashing board I guess and that way you can easily flash the ESP zero ones and also program them if you buy multiple of these adapters and they're only a few bucks, so I definitely recommend doing so because it's a lot more stable and easy than the manual way, using the serial wires and all that kind of crap. So let's quickly do that with the newest firmware and uh, see how it goes. Okay, so I have the module with my modifications. That's basically uh, setting the GPIOs to high and low so that it boots in flash mode. And uh, let's insert it to my laptop and, uh, well, see if it works. So this is the same as we did before. Uh, I'll put this uh, zip file with this contents uh, on my website so yeah, everyone can easily download it. Let's go to the firmware flashing, and I recently built a new firmware using uh, the online tool. It automatically detects the COM port. Let me choose the right firmware. And uh, let's flash it. And there you go. Easy as that. Okay, flashing is done. So we can now close this and remove the ESP module from the USB port. And I'm going to exchange the adapters. So I put the flash mode adapter away and I plug it into the normal adapter so I can program it. To program it, we go to the eSplorer folder and we open the eSplorer that file. This starts uh, eSplorer. eSplorer is a, a Java tool which uh, makes it easier to basically uh, program the Node MCU ESP8266 modules. So it automatically selects column 5, let's say open. And mostly I hit uh, heap a few times because often there's a bit of garbage as you can see. But once you do it a few times, the commands go through clearly and uh, that seems to be working. So, uh, okay, that's good. I don't want to restart now, Windows, go away. And um, the zip file is fully prepared. The code you need is in the Lua code directory, and it's called init.lua. Let's open that. There we go. And as you can see, uh, there's lots of code in there. Um, I'm not really going to go into what the code does or how to program it or something like that. Um, what's most interesting is that here under Wi-Fi config, you need to fill in the Wi-Fi config uh, you're currently using in your home. Uh, I'm not gonna do that on camera right now. I'll do that off camera. <laughs> 
but let's quickly go through it and basically see what it does. What qu the code in QuinNet basically does is it, it creates a TCP socket to which you can connect and send commands. And uh, those commands get interpreted for either channel 1 or channel 2. And after those are interpreted, a, a certain PWM value between 0 and 1023 is set to basically dim the LEDs that are connected to the QuinLED board. So once you filled in the correct uh, information, okay, I uh, quickly changed the, the Wi-Fi settings. So now let's uh, save it to the ESP. There we go. And I often hit a save and compile. And then I reset the module. Okay, that should boot right up. I hit the heat button a few times again. And now the ESP uh, should be connected to your wireless. So let's see if we got an IP. We can use the Wi Fi.sta.getIP command. And there we go, 10.10.200.12. Okay, so um, let's see if we can ping that. Okay, that seems to be working. Don't be alarmed by all kinds of weird ping timings. Uh, the ESP8266 isn't very good at network I.O. and doing other stuff at the same time. So pings will fluctuate and sometimes fall away and, you know, don't be too worried about it. Okay, so now the code is in um, the ESP and it's actually running right now. So how can we basically send a command to the module to dim? I don't have an LED strip connected right now because I'm using the, the USB flasher. But let's send some commands to it and see how that goes. To do that, we'll need a tool called Netcat for Windows. Well, let me remove these. And uh, well, basically, if you check uh, how to install, uh, I wrote a little text file. It says basically dump the uh, files that are in here into a path that's in, in your Windows path. So let's, let's say C Windows System 32. So let's do that real quick. Not sure if I already did it on my laptop. Windows System 32. Oh, they're already there in my case, but let's just replace them. There we go. And that should allow us to perform a command called NC. Okay, it does. So if we then check the zip file again, there's a file there called dimmer command line. Let's open that up and copy what's here. Go back to the command prompt. Well, okay, but we have to fill in the IP we just got. 10.10.200.12. And basically what it says, fade timer 2500, that's how long the fade should take from the current value to the new value. Which LED channel to send it to, in this case LED channel 1. And then it pipes that command to netcat. That's what we just put in Windows System 32 or another directory that's in the path. And then we say, wait two seconds and connect to this IP and this port. So basically it will send this text to the ESP module, which can then interpret it and perform the dimming command we wanted to do. So let's hit enter. And we see nothing. That's correct. 
But if we look in eSplorer, we see that the ESP module actually received the network value and that it's doing some calculations and doing the dimming. So let's do that in uh, real time. There we go. And let's dim to value 8. There we go. So now you can control this Wi-Fi connected module with your laptop. Awesome. Okay, so let me get an LED strip and a power supply and a Quinlet board and uh, we'll connect it up and see if it works. Okay, I have a power supply and I have it hooked up to mains but it's not connected right now. Then I have two wires with DC 24 volts going to an ESP LED module. We have the just programmed uh, ESP01 on there and then we have some cable going to this uh, 24 volt LED strip. Since the voltage converter on the board is variable, um, the input voltage doesn't matter. It will always send 3.3 volts out, but you shouldn't go much above 35, 36 volts input. So, okay, let's uh, plug this into the wall, see what happens. So there was a quick bright flash and then it dimmed to this dimmed state. The dimmed value when it just boots is actually set in the firmware uh, or in the in the code we just injected into the module. So if I like to have it start with a very low dim value, but if you wanted to start with a high dim value or something like that, you could just change that in the code. So let's uh, run the command again we did last time and see what happens. And there we go. It actually dimmed. So this is value 128. Let's go to 8. Okay. And if we change the uh, fade timer, we can actually make it take longer or shorter. So it was set to 2.5 seconds. Let's set it to 7.5 seconds and go back to 128. And there you go, network controlled LED lighting. So let's set it to a very low value, let's say one second. I like the slower fades, but you can choose whatever you want. And let's set it to a very high value, like uh, 1000. There we go, wow. These uh, LED strips I use are very high power, <laughs> as you can probably tell. Uh, let's take that down a notch to like uh, 400. That's actually 4,000, okay? It doesn't accept that input, so basically it just reboots. <laughs> I might need to change that some, at some point in the code. But we can Im immediately start controlling the module again, so. Okay, and that's basically where I wanted to leave this edition of the ESP8266 LED lighting. Um, I have a LED strip connected right now, but as you've been able to see in my other posts, I'm also using LED downlights. Um, starting to build that system because we, we just moved into the new house and that's uh, working just fine for now. Um, I think I'm going to make another part in this series and that's how to basically link this uh, together uh, with Demotics, a, a, a open source Demotica system. Uh, because the way it's right now, it, it, it's very functional, but uh, it's not very practical for, for daily usage. And uh, I'm sure your wife uh, or a girlfriend or whatever wouldn't agree with having something like this in, in the house. So, uh, yeah, we'll leave that for next time. And uh, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or something like that, please let me know.